Welcome back to another episode of the Chicago White Sox March to October, already on episode 8. And it's actually kind of funny, because just before I started recording this, I was looking back to my March to October last year with the Brewers, uh, and that was when I was much less consistent than I'm being now. It took me two months to get to episode 8 in that series, actually a little over two months. And we're just about three weeks into this March to October, and we're already on episode 8. So we are flying through this. This is actually my second attempt to record this, because the first time I went to record this, I got a notification about a, cla- a flash sale, and, and mayhem ensued. So you're going to have to uh, watch my next No Money Spent video when that comes out, probably next Monday or Tuesday, to see what I'm talking about there. But anyway, chances are, if you're here watching this video, you don't really care about Diamond Dynasty. So I'm not going to talk about Diamond Dynasty, because that's that's all what that's about. So we are in the March to October right now. The last one went pretty well. We had the Eloy um, player lock. We got a 1 plus for him. I I wish it would have gone better, but we did hit a home run and drew a walk. So we also struck out twice. So I guess that's where the only 1 plus came in. I did change the lineup around a bit though, the the CPU actually changed it automatically a little bit, a little while back, so I I changed it back to how I like it, Um, but I I myself made some changes too, so the biggest thing is I actually went ahead and made Danny Mendick our everyday starter at second base, bumping Leuri out of the lineup. It's not every day that you're going to bump a guy with a 304 average out of the starting lineup, but uh... When you got a guy who's batting 355 on the bench, that might be the reason to. So I think hitting-wise, Leury is probably the better player. He's got better hitting stats, but right now Danny Mendick is performing more, and he's got 107 bat at bats. So it's not really a fluke. It's not like he's he's doing that in only like 20 at bats. And on top of that, Leury really made me mad in the last episode because he was the one who cost us that first game in the episode by jogging to the ball in center field and uh, I also noticed that the reason he was in center field is because the game decided for whatever reason that Luis Robert wouldn't be a starter anymore so they put him on the bench they made Leuri the center fielder but anyway we, we've got it all back to normal now Tim Anderson his season's starting to turn around so I put him back at the leadoff spot uh, we got Eloy batting third because he's just a tank. Edwin batting right behind him. And then, yeah, it's pretty much just all. I mean, you've seen it. So anyway, we are going to jump into this first game here, trying to defeat the Rockies at home in a tie game. We're also trying to maintain the lead in the division. So this is a pretty big game right now. The White Sox have been wreaking havoc on their opponents so far this season. For a word on that, let's go down to the field with Heidi Watney. Well, Matt, these guys were not on many lists of top contenders coming into the season, but their stellar play so far is forcing everyone to take note. The question being raised now is, are they for real, or are things going to even out as the season moves on? One player told me that kind of talk only motivates them even more, and if people want to know if they're for real, they should just stay tuned. All right, thanks, Heidi. Well, according to Matt Vaskersen there, we've been wreaking havoc on our opponents, but from what I've seen, we're also having havoc wreaked on us because our pitching is not very, is not very good, but our hitting is what is propelling us. And Jace Fry, it seems like, is always the guy in the game when I get placed into it. Oh, we're going to turn two. Right off the bat, Jace Fry gets him grounding to third on a curveball. I don't know why I had a mental block calling it a curveball there. We got out of the inning. Let's walk it off here. Let's not let this one go any further than it needs to. Oh, man. Oh, I was right on that timing-wise. I was just couldn't get the PCI up there. That Oh, that would have been the game if I could have gotten that up there. Anderson, I don't think that one's going to drop. Man, that was just about as good PCI contact as I could get, but this time my timing was off. Alright, well now that we're in extra innings, we might as well just try and get this one to the 11th as quick as we can. Okay, we got Ryan McMahon tied up on the two-seam inside. There's two outs. Oh, and of course, 
Stupid right-handed hitter. That's going to be a triple for him, too, with 96 speed. No, he's staying at second. All right, well. Oh, no! I hate this. I hate this. That's going to be two full games in a row that I've given up the go-ahead run. I think with two outs and on a grounder up the middle that scores after a double. Trying to steal second, get him ground all. Are you kidding? The ball beat him there by... That was the slowest tag ever. You gotta be kidding. Oh, no. I threw it to the cutoff because I didn't think... <sighs> I did not think that they were going to go home on that. If I would have thrown it home, he would have been canned by a mile. All right. The two seam, he can't catch up to it. We got a two-run deficit. All right, we got Edwin working a walk on four pitches. They didn't want to face him. All right, well, they didn't want to pitch to Jose either. We got the go-ahead run coming to the plate. Now, actually, we don't because it's Adam Engel, and I am not hitting with Adam Engel in this situation. We're bringing in, I think, Mazzara. Well, Mazzara had actually already been used, so we got to bring in Zach Collins. Zach Collins... That one's hit kind of deep, but it's going to die at the track. Oh, I was all off at the plate <laughs> in that little moment there. Oh, that's a lot of snowflakes. This is going to be a rough simulation. This commentator is still talking. We are long gone. From being in the mode and that's a huge snowflake oh no this is gonna be ugly we are gonna drop in the division by a ton look at that we were in the lead of the twins and we just dropped three in a row to to our division rival to the guy the guys we're trying to stay ahead of this is bad we got to beat them not get swept and we did we dropped all the way down to third place almost all the way down the fourth place all right well i think we've got time to play this one even though i'm all off at the plate and i kind of want to save this one for some other time i'm gonna play it we're in a close contest here between division rivals and guys do players reach a little deeper in these matchups or should they maybe Hey, no doubt about that. A win against a division rival is much more valuable. In fact, in addition to gaining a game in your win column, you're also putting them one more behind in the loss column, which guarantees that your position in the standings is always improving. At the end of the season, it's these divisional rivals that you are measured up against. So absolutely, these are the games you definitely want to win. Two on, two outs. Mankata at the plate. We got to come through here, man. I've been raking with Moncada on my Diamond Dynasty team, but I haven't done much in this series with him. No! Oh! That, that saying I didn't even move the PCI. I thought I... Oh, I was right on that timing-wise, man. I My left thumb needs to wake up because it is in a coma right now. Well, Carlos Rodon is still in this game. He's kind of got a lot of energy left. So we'll, we'll keep him in there for now. If he gets in trouble, though, even a little bit, I'll, I'll yank him. Jeez, Tim Anderson. Everyone on this team with their fielding just worries me every time. When, you, when they hit that ball out there and you see that common badge under him. Ugh. And Eloy, you got to get there, buddy. Oh, like I said, every time it's hit to one of those common guys, I, I tense up. Trevor May. Coming into the game. Let's light him up here. He hasn't been lit up all year. He's due. Oh! <laughs> I am so off at the plate right now. It is ridiculous. How do I watch that pitch with a two strike count? Oh, I looked at strike three again. Are you kidding me? I am doing everything to shoot myself in the foot at the plate. I just swung at ball four. That was so far below the zone. I swung at ball four again. That one was a little closer at least. Oh, Edwin. 
No, don't tell me that's gonna die. It. Oh! What? No! And the ground ball is short, and we get out of the inning. We have one last chance to put some runs on the board. Hey, Leori, he did something good. He did a good. All right, look, that, that was a good start. A runner on with some speed, a ball in the gap could do it right away. But we gotta, we gotta make sure he scores at all costs. Luis Robert, that one's gone. I don't care that it wasn't a no-doubter. That's gone. I can tell. What? Wait, are you kidding? I mean, I guess we do have the wind kind of blowing in from left. Uh, I don't want Zach Collins up against the lefty, though. We got a got a pinch hit. Well, I'm assuming that Grandal wasn't in the game because it was his off day. So we're gonna we're gonna let him take the full game off. Plus, I haven't been too great with Grandal, so we're gonna give James McCann a try here against the lefty. McCann, dude. <laughs> Oh, I hit that ball so hard. Who else? With two outs and a runner on, he has to come through, right? All right. I can live with that, Danny. Good job. You did your job. We got two on now. Mm, left and center have got some strong arms, so we're going to have to play it safe on trying to score from second here. Tim Anderson, that has to get over his head, right? Yeah. <laughs> the three outs I made this inning, are you kidding? All three outs I made this inning were were smoked. And I lost. I didn't... Oh. <laughs> this game really knows how to mess with you mentally, man. I really... I, I know my hitting was off pretty much this whole episode, but that last inning, dude, all three outs were on good timing swings that were absolutely rocketed and i made outs on all of them they, they couldn't have given me one literally if they gave me one that would have i would have scored we would still be playing right now but no no we gotta lose we gotta get our snowflakes in we're probably down to about 500 now <laughs> yeah we've fallen all the way down to 30 and 27 five games back projected wins down to 83 well, I don't know. At least in the next episode, we'll have a, a pretty solid opportunity to turn things around, gain some ground back on the Twins after getting swept in a four-game series by them. But that is it for this episode. Make sure, if you liked it, hit the like button and subscribe if you want to see the rest of this March to October. Hopefully, we can turn it around, get the season on the right track, and make the playoffs. But I hope you all enjoyed, and I'll see you next time.